Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. So I was on vacation for about a week and came back and decided to start a new little video series. <clears throat> Excuse me. A handful of people have expressed interest in me doing more videos on books. There are a few people who liked when I was doing that at the beginning of this year and have requested some more. And so I decided to start a little series and I'm going to be just going through my bookshelves and talking briefly about all of the books I have. Um, I'm just going to kind of go shelf by shelf and I think that's going to be the name of this series and just discuss things, talk about things I like, different authors I like, that kind of thing. So I am out here not my game room, so you are gonna hear my dogs walking around and probably some other noises. And I'm not quite sure, filming-wise, really how to do this video well, just because it's gonna be a little hard holding the camera, setting it down, grabbing books, taking a look at things, but um, I'm sure the series will progress as we go. So I am just gonna go kind of a uh, bookshelf by bookshelf and then do a shelf by shelf. Uh, sometimes maybe only doing one shelf per video or sometimes two. I think today we're gonna take a look at two shelves and we will just start up here. And so I don't keep my books in really in any kind of discernible order, at least definitely not in alphabetical order by author. I do kind of keep them grouped together in authors Sometimes they're just randomly on the shelves. Um, I've never been one to alphabetize my things. I just kind of like, when I come out here and look at my books and pick them up, I just kind of like to uh, have random surprises on the shelves. And over the years, so this, this shelf here has only been set up for a few years, but over the years, things tend to gravitate towards some weird kind of order as I buy things and shelve things and read things and put things back. But today we're going to be taking a look at two shelves here. This is the first two shelves and it's mostly all Philip K. Dick, more Philip K. Dick, Lord Dunsany, and then J.M. McDermott. So up here on the first shelf we mainly have the all of the vintage paperback versions of the Philip K. Dick collection. And these were all the ones available, I want to say, through the 90s. I think they started producing these books in the early 90s. And up until that point, a lot of his stuff was out of print and harder to get. So let me see if we can. So here's a Martian time slip. This is actually one of my favorite top five Philip K. Dick books. Oftentimes I think this is my favorite one. I'm never quite sure. It's usually, um, I'll talk about a couple of the other ones. But um, yeah, so 1992, I believe, is around the time they started producing this series. And I was in high school then. And so that also is about the time that I really got into Philip K. Dick. I got in, into him earlier, of course, with Blade Runner, and I read the novelization, or the, not the novelization, I read the novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, and I was quite young, but I wasn't super into Philip K. Dick until the 90s, until this set came along. <clears throat> so we have, so it's been quite a long time. It's been maybe 10, or 12 years actually since I've read a Philip K. Dick novel. So I am kind of looking forward to going back and rereading some of his stuff. We have Martian Time Slip, The Simulacra, Galactic Pot Healer, that's a good one. Uh, Ubik, another one in my top five. Solar Lottery, The Man Who Japed, The Crack in Space, Man in the High Castle. I'm actually not a fan of Man in the High Castle. I know a lot of people think it is one of his best, but I don't think it's it doesn't do much for me. Game Players of Titan, Dr. Blood Money, great one. Transmigration of Timothy Archer. This one, 
even though they collect it in the sci-fi series, it is more closely related to his straight fiction, his non-genre fiction. That's a good one, Vulcan's Hammer. This is a collection of non-fiction, The World Jones Made, Cosmic Puppets, Divine Invasion, fantastic book. Uh, one of my favorite subgenres of fiction is religious science fiction, and this is a very good example of that. Counterclock World, Our Friends from Frolic 8, The Penultimate Truth, Dr. Futurity, I've never actually read this one, or Lies Incorporated. So I have a couple that I still need to read. Uh, Maze of Death, probably my least favorite Philip K. Dick novel. Just an absolutely dreadful examination of some of the worst people I've ever read. <laughs> Can't stand that book. Uh, Flow My Tears, a policeman said, great novel. The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch. This is the other one that's competing with Ubik and Martian Time Slip as my favorite. Um, I've got, I'll show you another cover I have of this book. We Can Build You, Valis. Now wait for last year. So Valis is kind of like the Valis trilogy, and that includes Valis, uh, the transmigration of Timothy Archer, and Divine Invasion. And that's kind of his trilogy of faith, you could say. If you, anybody knows anything about PKD, you know that what an important concept Valis was. Basically, it was kind of his name for God. Uh, now wait for last year. Eye in the Sky, Clans of the Alphane Moon, Time Out of Joint, and of course, A Scanner Darkly. And then over here we have, um, let's see, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which because of the movie rights, I don't believe that Vintage, this uh, spine, this imprint was able to do Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. So they put it in a trade version, Del Rey did, and it doesn't match the spines. I really hate that, but oh well. Then we have an interview. What if our world is their heaven? Pretty good. This is a collaboration he did with Zelanzi, and that is Deus Eri. I've never read that one either. Uh, Radio Free Albemuth, another one of his more religious works. This is one of my favorite um, biographies on PKD. I Am Alive and You Are Dead, A Journey into the Mind of Philip K. Dick by Emmanuel Carrera. And as you can see, I have a ton of post-it notes. I read this all in a single day, in a single sitting. And I just went through and I put post-it notes on all the pages with things that I loved. Um, I haven't gone back and I bet you if I did, I would read it and I would look at those pages that I marked and probably not be able to pick out the thing <laughs> that I really liked about it. Um, then we have a couple rarer books here. We have Philip K. Dick, The Last Testament by Greg Rickman, and To the High Castle, a life, early life, 1928, his birth through 1962. Um, I basically ha have this one just for the collection, the collecting value, because uh, I don't really find these years particularly interesting. It wasn't really until 1964 that PKD's writing, I think, got really good. And up through like his early life, I don't know. It just doesn't really interest me that much. But I did want it because it is the companion piece to Phil K. Dick, The Last Testament. And this is a fantastic series of interviews and information about Philip K. Dick. Really, really good. And then we have another... Um, Biography, Divine Invasions, A Life of Philip K. Dick. This is pretty good. I like this one as well. I don't like it as much as the other one. And then we have a few vintage paperbacks that I collect. So we have a version of Da, version of Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said. Another book, another version of Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said. You'll notice that I do end up with a lot of doubles of books because I collect them for different covers. I love this cover, this early um, ace paperback of Dr. Blood Money or How We Got Along After the Bomb. Has absolutely nothing to do with the cover. A lot of these old ones 
and just have the most the craziest coolest artistic covers that have zero to do with what is going on this one does and this is my maybe my favorite book cover ever the three stigmata of palmer eldritch i love it i would love to have a shirt with that on there a cool old copy of ubik that is pretty messed up i would love to find this in a better version uh, a collection of short stories the variable man another collect another version of the dick and Zelanzi. and then a uh, vintage i think this is the first edition paperback of um martian time slip which makes it look like a farming novel so that is the first shelf of Philip K. Dick. And then on the next shelf down, we have the Subterranean series of the complete short stories. So this is every short story. I believe it's in chronological order. I'm not the biggest fan of Dick's short stories. I definitely prefer his novels. And so, but some of them are, are quite good, of course. And then we have, let's see here, we have another, um, this is called In Pursuit of Vallis. This is some of um, collected works that Dick wrote about religion and his religious experiences. We have a screenplay that he wrote for an unproduced movie version of Ubik. And then this is from the science fiction studies. Um, I think that's in Chicago. Chicago? I'm not quite sure, but this is a collection of scholarly essays called On Philip K. Dick, 40 articles from the science fiction study. So there's there's a university here. Maybe it's Illinois. Chicago, Illinois, I believe. Um, but they have a science fiction department and they have a ton of great articles you'll see a couple more volumes of this of these scholarly collections in my book collection and then we have a dark haired girl which is a another collection of nonfiction that he wrote and then the exegesis of Philip K Dick edited by Pamela Jackson and Jonathan Lethem Lethem this contains most of this. It's a lot of his religious writings and ramblings of a man, basically ramblings of a madman. <laughs> but some of it's interesting. I was never able to get through it all. This is only a small portion. Dick wrote like something like 5,000 pages about his experiences with Vallis. So if I was going to say recommend five Philip K. Dick novels to read, I would recommend Martian Time Slip, Ubik, The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, A Scanner Darkly, and let's say, let's do a six, um, Dr. Blood Money and Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said. So if you've never read Dick, check out any of those and... I think you'll have a good idea of what he's all about. Next, we're going into a small section of Lord Dunsany. So Lord Dunsany is pretty much the, uh, he's kind of like the ultimate writer of fantasy. He is the direct inspiration for Tolkien, the direct inspiration for Lovecraft. And he, his prose writing is better than any other author who has ever written f fantasy fiction. And this is a really interesting book because this is from Tolkien's bookshelf. So these were books that Tolkien owned. And this is the Lord Dunsany, the Book of Wonder, and the Last Book of Wonder, and collections of stories. Now what's interesting about Dunsany compared to like modern fantasy is that this was, you know, decades and decades and decades before epic fantasy. And so a lot of his stories are only like a few pages long, but you get these incredibly rich and detailed <clears throat> stories that create worlds and atmosphere and theme in only a few short pages. 
And so these are two of his longer works, and as, as you can tell, they're quite slim. But this is probably his most famous, The King of Elfland's Daughter. And, you know, this is this is epic for Dunsany, and that's about 230 pages. I have not read this one, The Charwoman's Shadow. Introduction by Peter S. Beagle, the author of The Last Unicorn. And then we have a few of these... Um, the, what is it? The Adult Fantasy by Ballantine Books. Not adult as in like pornographic, but Ballantine Books in the 70s and 80s, I believe, um, under the instruction of Lynn Carter, put out a series of high quality literary fantasy. So these are all short stories. And, some, and then, of course, the Charwoman's Shadow novel. Over the Hills and Far Away, another collection of, a collection of short stories. Beyond the Fields We Know and At the Edge of the World. So if you have not read Dunsany, the great thing about him is that most of his stuff is in public domain now because he was writing so long ago. And so you can go to Amazon and on your Kindle, you can get you know, everything, just about everything he has ever written uh, for free or for like 99 cents. Um, highly suggest just pick uh, the Book of Wonder and the Last Book of Wonder are great places to start. And then thematically from Lord Dunsany, we're kind of going into J.M. McDermott. Uh, McDermott, I believe, is probably the most underrated author writing today. He, The reason I group him next to Lord Dunsany is because I think he is the most the, the perfect embodiment of what Lord Dunsany was doing you know, decades ago Dermot is doing that now this book right here Last Dragon is actually my all time favorite fantasy novel this is the novel that I compare all works of fantasy to I think it was written in 2008 I believe yeah 2008 and um, this I have never read a work of fantasy that even comes close to touching what this book does. Um, actually, McDermott wrote a little bit in here. I, I didn't. He didn't write this for me, but it was signed. And um, it's just a wonderful work. Very challenging. It's very poetic in the way that it's written. There's not a lot of combat or there's not even a dragon in it really. So it's it's just very good. If you're looking for something different, something literary, something that will challenge you and something unlike anything you've ever read in the fantasy, I highly recommend Last Dragon. And then we have a self-published collection of novellas and short stories, The Lady or the Tiger, Death Mask and Eulogy and Other Reimaginations. We have a science fiction novel that he wrote that I haven't read yet, The Fortress at the End of Time. A fantastic collection of short stories called Disintegration Visions. This is one of my all-time favorite collections of short stories. Really, really good. Straggle Taggle. This is another one of his that I have not read yet. Maze. This is pretty good. Um, he gets compared a lot to Gene Wolfe. I guess I can see that just in the sense that he's a little challenging and he's not really concerned with trends and tropes of fantasy. But I would say that The Last Dragon is imagine if uh, Miyazaki, instead of making animated films, made a fantasy novel, but even that, you know, Miyazaki meets Gene Wolfe might be somewhat like that. Uh, Women and Monsters. This is kind of a uh, collection of short stories focusing on women and monsters and um, kind of like, it's like the Greek mythologies as told from the perspective of the women. And then we have his trilogy here, Never Knew Another. When We Were Executioners and We Leave Together. 
this is a fantastic trilogy. Very somber, dark, slow moving, kind of a noirish fantasy, urban fantasy. And not urban fantasy in the way that like um in the way that Neil Gaiman or uh the kind of you know hot topic urban fantasy what i mean is it's almost like the if the wire was fantasy it's it's urban in that it's it's it is it's violent it's it's grimy it's low fantasy tons of memorable moments very dreamlike all of his stuff has this incredibly dreamlike quality to it and then to um an analog with a short story by McDermott and also an Asimov with a short story by McDermott. So yeah, so those are the first two shelves. Um, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about anything that I touched on today, just let me know in the comments and we will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.